batch analytics with apache flink aggregations and joins aggregations in this video we are going to look at group by aggregation reduce reduce group and co-group first we will do some data preparation we have specific data sets for this in order to complete this section with hands-on exercises the first data set is the state tax rates which has two columns state and tax rate and we will load this csv file as shown this is states tax rates dot csv we are going to load it now we can look at the count as well as examine the first five records as before. As seen, each line has the state and the tax rate, just two columns. So we would like to split this into the two columns, which means create a tuple, right? The other thing is we would like to get rid of the header column, which is the first row. So we will use the filter function and the map transformation function for this. Okay, here we see how to remove the header row as well as how to transform it. The tax columns, taxes columns dataset is created from taxes dataset. By filtering it out, the header row and then splitting it into two columns, one is for state, the second one is the tax, which is a float. Similarly, we will have the second data set because we are doing aggregations and joins. We would need two data sets. The second data set has three columns state, year, and population. Here, there's a different CSV file, and we will load it similarly using read text file data set API. So we clearly see that we have three columns here. So now we will clean up both the data sets and remove the header row and then split the lines into columns here we have split each line into two columns let's see what we have right now clearly we got our two tuples let's do this for populations also as seen we split both the taxes and taxes columns tuple two tuple and the population columns into the three tuple of state year and population here so the fundamental idea is to do majority of the operations on these data sets whenever we have to have a join or a group or some sort of aggregation we try to use the first column from the both the data sets which is state because we have state in both the data sets and then we'll do a variety of aggregations and joins throughout this section okay so we have the taxes columns now with the two tuple we just executed in the shell we have the populations columns which has three tuples again we executed the command in the shell now we are ready to do the first aggregation which is group by which is quite simple group by zero means taking the first column which is the state so we're grouping by state and sum of two means the third tuple or third value right because we have done population columns as three tuple so it has three columns zero one and two where 0 refers to the state, 1 refers to the year, 2 refers to the population. So here we are simply grouping by state and just adding a population. It doesn't really have any practical purpose, this part, but just to show you what you can do is the sum. So imagine you have 20 columns or 50 column tables and you are trying to group by state and then add up, let's say, the net revenue generated. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do using this very simple aggregation we'll run this command now okay now we group by state and added up the populations disregarding the year of course so it's quite simple how this worked so that's our group by example so after group by zero you could do other operations too so if you want to do find the minimum population right like minimum population value which year has that for each state all we need to do is change the sum that you see here to min or max for min for minimum max is for maximum we'll run both of them right now this is going to find the minimum population year for each state let's do the maximum 
map. So now we have minimum and maximum years for each state. I mean the populations. We have minimum and maximum populations. So the first one was sum, second min, third is max. And of course, so ignore the state and the year because we haven't done anything with the year in this case. But this shows us how easy it is to use this. There are a variety of use cases where this will be incredibly valuable, like single data set aggregations. That's what this is for. This is not across the data sets because when you do group by, you cannot do multiple data sets. That's all joints and co groups, which we'll cover further down in this section. Now, aggregation can be sum or minimum or maximum. These are the three functions now. So, this can be applied even without group. So, group by is nothing to do with this. You can also do a filter and then do sum of two and min of two, where two is the third column, as you know. Populations has state, year, and population. So, you can still do these operations too. We're going to run these in the shell now. So, I pasted all three. There it is. The first one is sum, second one is minimum, third one is maximum. I just filtered out everything but Alabama to make it clear. So, it's finding minimum, maximum, and the sum of populations. We haven't done anything with the year, so don't pay attention to 2016 in all three cases. We haven't done anything. We're only operating on the second column. If you want to do on the year, yeah, you can also do it on the year. These are the three things we just ran. The next one we will want to look at is reduce. Reduce applies the reduce function on group tuples. That means you can group things as before, just for the sum and min and max. But you can actually do much more sophisticated computation on the reduce. So here you're telling what to do in the reduce. Just don't just do sum. In this case, we are doing something special here. Right, so that's why this is important because now you can override reduce using the reduce function. This is the syntax you have to follow, and then it will do a custom reduce operation. We will show this in the shell right now. Okay, as shown, we have seen this in the shell. We reduced it by adding up the populations. Right, so in the reduce function, it takes the string int long, which is the population column, the three columns, right? String is the state, int is the year, long is the population, and the reduce function takes all the three tuples as a iterable list, and then it just goes through it, right? Just look at it, it just keeps calling itself. Intermediate result one, two, three plus next three, which means you are continuously doing a cumulative operation here. So, you start with nothing and then you keep calling it with the next and the next and the next. That's what you're doing here. Okay. So, the reason that this doesn't change now the year is because we are not really computing that. We are not doing anything to it. We are only taking the populations here. So, if you want to do something to the year, you can take inter instead of intermediate result 2, which is being passed throughout, you can do something here saying, okay, next dot underscore 3 or and underscore 2 you can compare the years, you can do other kind of manipulations here. But this is a very clear example how you can take the three tuples and then iteratively do some operation to reduce the output of the values. Reduce group. Reduce group is much more advanced here. You can customize how aggregation is done even better because now you're operating on reduced groups themselves with uh, a bunch of different things that you can think of like it's again is iterable it is based on that but unlike reduce which actually calls the same function over and over again in reduce group you can customize the output for example you can control that you can output completely new types of elements you can do various variety of things like looking up reference uh, look up databases you can join with other things you can do a lot of stuff here because in reduce group once you call it the function allows you to do that. So let's look at the next screen. We'll see an example. So it's a little more wordy here, but let's look at what it means. Group by zero, we are grouping by state. We have reduce group. We do new group reduce function with takes the three tuples, state, year, population, state, year, population. Okay, so this really means that it takes these as an iterable, and then this is your output. But the output you can change, as I said, I can put case classes there. I can do a lot of stuff. I can completely output new type of records from this. So it's very flexible here. So it just iterates through the input. This is iterable because once you group it, you have an iterable list 
because the same state has multiple years and multiple populations they come as a list and we are just iterating the list and picking up whatever we want so here you can change it completely it's totally flexible here we are simply taking the year state and the sum of the population we are adding the population we're not changing the other two okay so we'll execute this now and see how this works out so here we see that we executed that and we are able to get the output the group reduce or reduce group it's called the group reduce function is the one you have to override and provide so this tells flink what to do when you collect all the iterable multiple values for each group which is pretty much each state and then you emit whatever you want here we can emit anything absolutely you can write to database you can do many things here the last one we will look at is co-group co-group looks at two data sets see so far reduce group and reduce they look at single data sets here we're looking at two data sets at one time and then when it does two data sets you can join them with a specific field you can mention and once you join you're actually telling it what to do you can again do very complex things here just like reduce group but here you're operating on multiple data sets that's the big difference now the other thing to remember here is everything comes it's like an outer join full outer join if anyone is familiar with joins you'll see it in the next uh, video about joins but this pretty much gives you doesn't matter if the left has it right has it it just gives you all the combos and you, you just have to figure this out like how to do it without generating errors so we'll see it in the next screen so this is what it is core group like where zero equal to zero which means zero is the state the first column from the first data set which is taxes columns the second one is populations columns uh, zero which means again state so it's actually joining these two on state it's grouping them to saying that when the state is the same please give and call this co-group function with two iterables one iterable is for the left side the other iterable is for the right side and collector is again flexible so you can actually customize this heavily and create your own types of data types here we're simply looking at the right iterator we're doing something with the left iterator we're picking the state and the tax and then we are again summing up the population and putting it there like state and tax and sum so the output will look different it's not either one right it's a string float long the inputs are string float for the state tax string int long for state year and population the output is state tax rate and the sum of the population let's execute this in the shell now all right so now it picked up the tax rate from the first data set and from the second data set it added up all the populations for each of the state because co group used the state to kind of pick the pairs from both the data sets this is per state we can do this